Good evening and welcome to our Year 9 Options event at Brian Lee's School. This evening is designed to inform you about the options process and how to support your son or daughter to make an informed decision. My name is Mrs O'Neill, I'm a member of the leadership team and I have the responsibility for overseeing the curriculum. This involves the leadership and management of the options process. Mr Mottram is our transition lead who oversees the key transition points within students' education as they move from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3, Key Stage 3 to Key Stage 4 and Post 16. During this presentation, I will be introducing you to the options process, go through the qualifications available and give advice on how you can help your son or daughter to make the right decision. Previous to this evening, your son or daughter has hopefully started to discuss some of the subjects they may be interested in studying, what they are thinking about as a career and have started to have com these conversations at home. If they have a particular career in mind, they should be undertaking research to find out what subjects are needed for their next steps. Hopefully you have had chance to read the head teacher's newsletter that outlines the process You've been able to look through the Key Stage 4 curriculum booklet and watch some of the subject presentations that are available via the Year 9 transition page of our website. All further updates of the options process will be through the Head Teachers newsletter. If you have any questions as we go through this evening, please pop them onto the web chat. From here, they will be collated and addressed through the Head Teachers newsletter or by specific subject teachers next week during lessons. I'm now going to pass you on to Mr Mottram, who is your transition lead for the school. Thank you, Mrs O'Neill. Hello, everyone. I hope you and your families are well. My role as transition leader covers all areas of transition across the school. However, today I really want to focus on obviously the transition from year nine into year 10. It's a really vital part of our school time because we have students who have now been at Brian Lee for three years and they're choosing option subjects which will form the pathway of their career. Now, at this moment in time, it might be quite easy just to look at things on a subject level and to not see the bigger picture. So I'd like to talk to you about how these option choices link to the bigger picture. And what I mean by that is the working world. So the labour market information is something that's really important. It's something that we've looked at as a school to make sure that our option choices for our students link to the working world. And the decisions we make now can have a huge impact on our futures. And it's really vital that we focus on that because by picking subjects that put you on a certain pathway, it means that you have a nice future kind of planned out for you. And it's good to see that you are on a journey rather than kind of picking subjects that don't really put you on a certain pathway. So I'd like to talk about an area of our website, which is really useful for what I'm referring to. If you go to the Brian Lee's homepage and click on careers and then follow the link to the careers labour market information, you will then see a fantastic resource on the school website called the Careerometer. And the Careerometer allows you to type in certain jobs and it tells you the pay, the working hours and extra information about that job. What this then does is it gives you a sense of where that job sits in the working world. And that's vital for making sure that you pick the right subjects now, because the careerometer will say if you want to do this role or this career, these are the subjects that you will need. So I recommend that you spend a bit of time on that website, specifically on the career section of our school website, and that will help to give you a bit of a sense of some decisions that you could make regarding your career and obviously link to that your options. Link to this, we have a fantastic support system in place at school and I'll just talk through some of the things that we can offer that help our students. The first thing to start off with is to talk about Eclipse. Now Eclipse is a brilliant website that we have logins for our students and they will be given to students through My Child at School from the 8th of March. And Eclipse is a website that allows you to type in 
jobs to type in potential career plans and it tells you what you need to do in order to get on that career path it tells you subjects that you need to take things to research things to look at and it's a brilliant piece of software that can really really help you to create a sense of a path in terms of your career the next thing to talk about and this is more for students who are thinking of going to bl6 this is a website on the second bullet point that gives you an idea of a level courses and it gives you more information on those specific courses and where they can lead you for your future career path as well so we recommend if you are looking at taking a levels at bl6 to spend some time looking at the website there for career soft your password will be given to you via your progress tutor and that will be in early march as well furthermore we have a national career service support and this is a company that work with the school and they provide support for students and they give certain careers ideas and they are a company that we have had a lot to do with over the past few years and they've been brilliant in supporting and giving us more advice on how our students can learn new skills to take into the world of work when we have more information on when they will be available to come to school we will of course send this to you and let our students know as well Another website I'd like to talk about is the Prospects website. This is a fantastic website that helps you map out careers. So you can put certain career paths in and it helps you to choose where you would like to head with those certain career paths and obviously what subjects you might need to study along the way. So a very, very highly recommended website there. The next two are specifically university links. So UCAS is something I'm sure you've heard about uh, in regards to a system for applying to university and then the Russell Group Informed Choices website here is giving you specific information on certain universities that offer courses and that are recommended across the country and these two websites are vital for anyone who would like to go to university because they give you course information, they give you information on universities and where they are, where they're based, etc. So they are really, really important because once you look at the courses on offer, it gives you a sense of direction and it means that you can make informed choices about your options now. So there's some really brilliant systems there that we can offer our students to use and we recommend that you spend time looking at them with your children making sure that you have seen everything that is on offer and everything that's available so let's talk about the difference between key stage four our students in year nine have been at school for three years now and they will be used to key stage three and the demands of it however key stage four is another step up just to think about things from a numerical perspective key stage four is a 19 month course People often think years 10 and 11 are two full years, but obviously with the exam period, it actually equates to a little over five school terms. So that's a big change in the sense that there's one less term for our students to study. And that puts uh, more pressure on the time in school. And there's a greater responsibility to make sure that work is done throughout those five terms. There is more work and it is more challenging as well. It's a higher level of work. Therefore, that means there's a lot more independent learning required. So it really is vital that we enter year 10 in a really positive mind frame. And we look at year 10 as almost a fresh start again to make sure that we start our courses on the right um, speed and the right approach. And what we are looking at is we're looking at that once again bigger picture because all of the hours of independent learning that we expect you to do at home all the hours that we expect you to do in school all of the accumulation of time and effort will lead to those mock and final examinations that will give you those results of your gcse subjects it's really important to look at the exam period as well because key stage three examinations will take place and have taken place over a week. And the examination period for GCSE is much longer. You have a six week examination period. So the intensity of that period is really something that needs to be taken into account. It's all about preparation. So making sure that you are prepared to give time to your studies is vital. You can't enter year 10 and just think that it will take care of itself because the first lesson you have 
in that subject in year 10, that material will be on your examination at the end of year 11. And that's sometimes a bit of a myth that some people uh, need to have the truth told about. They often think that the first year is just about getting settled and learning a few bits and bobs, whereas the information that you're taught in year 10 is examination material. So it's really crucial that you start in the right frame of mind. And one of the biggest differences, and obviously why we're here talking about this, is the choice that you have. So you have a choice at Key Stage 4 with some of your subjects, and that's why we need to make sure that you choose the subjects that match your curriculum requirements appropriately. So let's talk now about that selection of options. We need to think really, really carefully about the options that your child picks. Some pointers here just to think about. Pick subjects that students do well in. Um, pick subjects that students can do well in as well. So if there's some potential there, then it's really important that we capitalise on that. And this is the second point, possibly the most important one for me. Pick something that they enjoy. Um, I always recommend that in any subject that you obviously will do better in a subject if you enjoy it. So make sure you pick something that you and uh, you have a keen interest in that you really, really enjoy and you look forward to each lesson. Make sure there's an interest there as well. So what's really wonderful is that students in the past have picked subjects that they're interested in and they've not studied them before, but then they've actually gone on to study that subject at A level and at university level. So this could be something that kind of is new and it opens a new door as well. So that interest is so, so important as well. We need to think about having a broad range because I'm completely and fully aware that some students will listen to this and know exactly what career path they are on and know exactly what they need to do. Some will be sitting here thinking, I'm not quite sure actually, and they need a bit of kind of guidance with that. And that's what we're here for. And my advice would be to pick a broad range of subjects if you don't know what your career path is. That just means that you're giving yourself a number of options so that you can make that choice potentially later on. And that later on choice, what I'm referring to now is that sixth form or college decision, because the choices that you pick now at GCIC will have an impact on the courses that you choose at sixth form. That's not to say it's the be all and end all. So if you don't pick a subject at GCSE, it doesn't mean you can't then study at A level. Obviously, it makes it easier knowing uh, that you have studied it before and that transition from year 11 to year 12 is easier, but it's really worth planning now. So my recommendation is that you look to the future and I've used this phrase already, but the bigger picture, it's not just looking at the fact that a year nine student is picking options for year 10. You're picking options that are hopefully going to kind of craft this journey, this personal journey that will lead you through years 10, year 11, into year 12, into year 13, then on to university potentially or apprenticeships, whatever it might be. So look at the decisions you make now and think about that future program. And it's all about opening those doors. It's about having options. It's about having the potential to look at different career paths if that is what is on your mind at the minute. As I said, some of you will have a really clear direction. Some of you will want to have numerous open doors. And it's really vital that you have the right subjects now to make that a possibility later on. Let's think about some reasons now for taking options because. These are some of the most common things that we come across. Let's talk about these good reasons on the left hand side. Some really solid reasons to pick a subject if you are good at that subject, if you enjoy the subject, you know, they're the, the two big ones. Some further ideas, if you've researched a subject and it's something that you haven't taken before and you think, I actually really look forward to learning about that, then that's a really good reason to take it as well. Another good reason is that feedback from your teachers, you know, making sure that you've heard from your teacher that you're good at the subject. Uh, if you get that confirmation, then that's just a brilliant sign to take that subject as well. Picking a subject because it can help you when you're older and picking a subject because you're good at doing things involved in the subject. Think from an outside perspective as well, because it might be the, the subject that you want to pick. You have skills that you've used outside of the classroom linked to that subject, and that can be a really telling sign if you want to pick a subject as well. Let's talk about the other side then, so the bad reasons. Um, some reasons why people shouldn't pick a subject, and these are some of the most common ones. Um, if a friend has chosen it, 
don't pick a subject just because a friend has chosen it. You've got to remember that your friend is not on the same path as you. You are on your own unique path and it's really important that you make the decision to be bold to take the subject that you want to study, not because your friend has chosen it. Similar with an older brother or sister, if they have chosen a subject, don't feel like you have to do it as well. Uh, make sure you don't make a decision based on the teacher as well. Um, it can be an easy trap to fall into that if you have a really good working relationship with a teacher. You can't guarantee that you will have that teacher for the subject. So it's really important not to get um, that idea in your head about a subject and the teacher being intrinsically linked. Another reason is the subject is new. So some people might look at the subject and think, oh, it's new, I'll give it a go. And um, actually when they start it, they haven't researched it properly and therefore it's quite tricky. And then finally, um, sometimes parents can feel like they want students to take a certain subject as well. We obviously encourage parental support, but we need to make it really clear that students shouldn't feel they have to take a subject because of a parental decision if they took it, for example, uh, when they were younger. So it's really important that the student's opinion always comes first in picking these subjects. I'd like to finish now and just talk about the help that we can offer in school. And we have some brilliant people in school to really support and give as much help as possible during this process. I'll start off by talking about our careers advisor. So we're very lucky at our school to have a specific careers advisor. Not every school has uh, the option to do this and we're very proud of the fact that we can offer this. So there will be opportunities for meetings uh, with the careers advisor and we recommend that we speak to our careers advisor as much as possible. Subject staff are so important as well, making sure that students have spoken to the subject staff, they can give that true picture of ability and they can give you that honest feedback and that guidance. So it's really vital that our students speak to our subject staff. Linked to this, in terms of staff, we have plenty of other teaching staff who are there, but they come in different forms and different guises. So our Key Studies 3 manager, Mr Hayhurst, is a brilliant person to speak to because he understands the all round school situation. He will know in your year group, obviously as individuals, you have your own situation and he will understand that. So he's a really good person to speak to, to give you that perspective. Your form tutor linked to this as well. They will know you very well. And they will have seen you develop socially and academically throughout your time at Brian Lee's. So speak to them because they have seen the bigger picture. They've seen you develop throughout your subjects at school. So speak to those students. So speak to those um, people in your form. Um, speaking of students, it's worth obviously speaking to those people around you. Speak to your peers. Make sure that you get a sense of you know, what it's like to do those courses. You will know people in year 10, year 11, year 12, year 13, who have done courses, who have been there, who have been in that situation, who've gone through the process that you have. So speak to them, you can get a really valuable insight. You know, speak to brothers and sisters, cousins that may have been through this process before and do get as much information as possible from them. And then finally, um, the people that know you the best, parents and family, Get a really good idea from all of them. Speak to grandparents, speak to uncles, aunties, cousins, you know, whatever it is, whatever connection you have, speak to those people because you might not realise, but there's so many career paths within your family that you can explore and hear about that will give you a really nice sense of where to go moving forward. So do utilise the ability to speak to those people around you. OK, I'd just like to finish now on um, a bit of a personal thought of mine that I think is really vital to keep in mind. From a transition perspective, this is a huge, huge step. The last big kind of transition period for the year nine students was when they joined secondary school. So going from year six primary school to year seven, that was a big, big jump. Now, three years later, we're in the position where we are now, where we're now choosing our subjects for our next big decision. And it can often be a daunting time, but as we've said, we have so many people here to help and look after our students. So do use um, the information that is on offer here. Look on the school website, look at all the kind of things that we have to help make those decisions. And the final thing I will say is make sure that our students and your children are speaking 
to staff speaking to people that is the best solution to kind of finding out as much information as possible and as long as you can look back on the decisions that were made in regards to options if you can say i researched everything i did all of the available things that were on offer then you can look back and say i made the right choice at that time if you look back and say actually i rushed it i didn't make the right decisions then you know it's something to learn from in the future so make the right choices with the informed decisions that you can make by looking at all of the relevant information that you have in front of you so thank you for your time and i will now pass you back over to mrs o'neill who's going to talk about the key stage four curriculum thank you and take care thank you mr mottram we review our curriculum annually to encourage a breadth and balance of subjects to support post-16 progression to ensure cost effectiveness and to incorporate new initiatives therefore there will be differences in the courses offered and what we are able to provide this year compared with previous years. Although this is the first time students have been able to make choices about what to study, 35 hours of their 50 hour fortnightly timetable is used to deliver our core curriculum. At Brian Lees, we offer two types of qualifications. GCSE qualifications are graded from one to nine with nine being the highest and higher than the old A star grade. A grade four is classed as a standard pass, whilst a grade five is the expected high pass. Vocational qualifications continue to be graded as distinction, star, distinction, merit and pass. GCSEs are rigorous. There is limited coursework and a wide range of content. The vocational qualifications are theoretical, practical and work related courses. They are for students who prefer completing projects or coursework as opposed to exams, although there is a formal exam element. If you are not familiar with the new vocational qualifications, government reforms to the curriculum in 2018 increased the rigour of these qualifications to ensure that they are on par with GCSEs. At Brian Lee's School, all students study the core curriculum. All students study GCSEs in mathematics, English language and English literature. Students have a choice of pathway for science. Science Trilogy leads to two GCSEs, whilst Triple Science leads to separate GCSEs in biology, chemistry and physics. Both pathways can lead to A-level study within science subjects. The majority of students will study French, German or Spanish at GCSE. This is the language that they are currently studying. However, a second language can be chosen as an option. We expect the majority of our students to challenge themselves by taking a humanity either geography or history at GCSE, as this will enable them to fill the EBAC and help keep their options open for future courses and careers. Similarly, with languages, your son or daughter can study both geography GCSE and history GCSE through the options process. Finally, it is a statutory requirement for all students to study religious education physical education, citizenship and personal, social, health and economic education at Key Stage 4. For their core curriculum, these subjects do not lead to qualifications. However, religious education and physical education can be taken to GCSE level by choosing the subject as an option. Myself and Mr Mottram have both mentioned the English Baccalaureate. To put it simply, it is not a qualification. It is a way to measure and compare how many students in a school are getting grade five or above in certain GCSEs and show your child has got a broad and balanced curriculum. These subjects also happen to be the ones most regularly considered by college and university courses 
so it's worth bearing in mind when deciding which GCSEs to take. However, you don't need to have studied all of these subjects to go on to university, but having your GCSE mix steered towards EBAC subjects will keep your future choices open. Through taking a modern foreign language and opting for a humanity, your son or daughter will fulfil the requirements of the EBAC. To ensure your son or daughter is not disadvantaged, we advise for them to opt for a broad range of subjects from different areas. And as a result, there are some subject combinations we deter students from studying as they are seen to be too similar by the Department for Education. And in this instance, we deter students from taking GCC drama and performing arts, and also for opting for more than one art and design course. It only seems fair to warn you that students may not get the subjects that they would like to study. This is not because the school doesn't want to give it to them. There are a number of constraints to what we are able to provide. For instance, if a course does not attract a high enough number of students, then we cannot run it. Therefore, you may need to be prepared to compromise. The deadline for options to be submitted is the 19th of March. Your son or daughter needs to sub submit their choices online. Login and passwords for the site will be available through My Child at School on Monday the 8th of March. If your son or daughter would like to amend their choices before the deadline, you should email info at brianlees.co.uk for the attention of the data team. Beyond the deadline, we finalise the courses that we can run in April and we will liaise with students whose choices are not possible given the timetable and group size. So thank you for attending our options presentation. If you have any questions, please post them on the chat in order for them to be responded to um, next week. OK, thank you very much.